Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to RTC TV4. My name is Dakota Hayden, alongside with Blair Zimmerman. How you doing? And we'll be your co-commentators for tonight's boys varsity matchup between the Casting Comets and the Culver Cavaliers. We apologize for the shot at the ceiling. Some technical difficulties here <laughs> as we try to get everything arranged. Um, looks as though we have uh, the Honors Choir taking the floor to present our country's national anthem. As the clock winds down towards zero. <laughs> it would be a shame to have a loud buzzer go off in the middle of the anthem. With that lovely rendition of the national anthem performed by the Castings Honor Choir, we are live with the ball game. We're going to start things off with the Culver lineup. We got number three, Weston, Kel Weston Keller. Number 11, Shane Stevens. Number 15, who we do not have on our roster list. Uh, Lance Keller. Oh, Lance Keller, okay. Number 40, uh, Carter Stevens. Yes, I was looking up the wrong thing to start off with anyway. Number 45, Braden Jones. Or Brandon Jones. Oh, that's okay. I get our players' names wrong, so, you know. All right. And then over for our casting comments. We got number 13, Hunter Shanelob. At number 20, Brady Hartman, mullet man himself. We got number 22, Zane Scott. And number 23, Brandon Kinzer. Filing out, number 33, Mike Rands. And I've uh, talked to several members of the community who uh, keep up with our cast and comments. Been, uh, ha I've had an opportunity to talk to some of the coaching staff, and they really feel like the guys over the last several of the games, which were not broadcast here with us on RTC TV4, right. um, that they've really begun to gel. So in between that, and uh, fresh off of the varsity girls win last evening, I'm really excited to see some basketball tonight. Yeah, let's see if uh, the old comments can pull uh, two wins over Culver in the past two nights. I don't remember seeing the final score for the JV game, but I don't think they were able to pull through on that one though. No, no, they were not. The, the JV comments did fall to the JV Cavaliers. Let's send up for the tip off. Hunter Shane Lobber, six foot five. Tall guy, shouldn't be too much trouble getting a hand in there. And there's the tip. 
Gets it over to Kinzer, and we'll start this game off. Kinzer looking for somebody open. Nobody in the Rands. Ends up out of bounds off the Cavaliers. In the back, Comet's way. Checking in, Rands looking for someone open. He's going to lob it out to Shane Lob. He's going to give it back to Rands, trying to find an opening here to get something moving early on here in the game. It's over to Kinzer to pop a three. It's good. Nailing that three. That's what I like to see. It's what we like to see. That's how we start off a ball game. Culver now taking to their side of the court. Over to number 11 on the outside of the arc. Up to 40. Gets it in the paint to number 15. 11 shooting it back into 45, trying to get up for a two. Just a bit over. Looked to be off on Kinzer, perhaps. But either way, sending it back to Culver. Ball in play to number three. That actually should be Owen Valaquet. Uh, again, we had the wrong roster. And travel called on number 40. Making a Comets possession. No, we had the right roster. I was reading off the JV list. I now <laughs> realize that, and I apologize for anyone I missed because I was reading off the JV. All right, Kins are in the common court. <laughs> Over to Zane Scott. That was a, kind of a weak pass, but it, it made it through. Hartman Hart now. Yeah. Over to Shane Laub. Not used to seeing the big guy out of the post. Oh. Wonder what kind of strategy they got going with him, keeping him out on the arc. Kins are getting over to Hartman. Hartman looking for Rands, gets it to him. And he's now lobbing it over to Scott. Shane Lobb setting screens, trying to get something going for Scott. He hands it off to Rands. And Rands heading it back over to Shane Lobb. And back to Rands. Back over to Kinzer. Got a pushing foul on Culver, giving it back to Comets. They'll have to take it out, though. He's on number 15. That's his first, team first, game first. <laughs> Dubious honor. Rands checking it into Shane Love, handing it back off to Rands. It was a nice play. Giving over to Kinzer to pop a three. Just Look. off the mark. Look Culver's good. number 45 with the rebound. Number 11 into Cavaliers territory. Trying to get something moving, lobs it over to number three at the top of the arc. And take a brief second, kind of let him set up. And try and get over to number 15 as he's going to try and drive in. Can't find anything. He's going to send it back out to number three. Got a foul called, giving it back over to the Comets. So, number 40 hip screen, his first, team second. Rands checking the ball in the Kinzer. He'll be taking it across over the mid. And they're trying to Looking find someone. something. Bounces it over to Shane Lob. Travel on Shane Lob. Doesn't quite keep that back foot planted. It's all right. He's a little bit eager. Wanted to get in there. All right, back in the Cavaliers territory. Ball over 40 to number 11. Or to 15 in that corner, tries to pass it into the paint, and that pass is intercepted by Kinzer. Kinzer gonna go pass it down over to Rands. Rands trying to drive in a little bit, sends it back out to Hartman to pop a three. Way over, I think he might have intended to get to Shane Love to bounce it in for a two. If he didn't, he did. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Back in Cavaliers territory. Passing around the outside of the arc. Up to number three at the top. Looking for a man to open up. Over to number 11. 40 at the arc. It was a bit of a sloppy pass, bounced around several of the defenders, but ended up with a foul on, on number 20, Brady Hartman. 
That's his first, the team first. And we are being joined here at the press table by uh, Lady Comets, Varsity Lady Comets head coach, Don Helmick. Don, good to have you with us this evening. Thank you. And congratulations on that win last night. I appreciate that. We, we played hard and uh, ended up getting getting a W there in the end. Awesome, awesome. Well, we got Brandon Kinzer driving, goes clear into the paint, sends it to Hartman, who's going to send it back out to Zane Scott on the three-point arc. Scott's going to send it back over to Kinzer. Ooh, intercepted pass. Almost got it back, fumbling with the ball in midcourt. Wow, and Hartman with the layout. You can't question his dedication on that. 15 popping for a two. That's two. good. That puts Cavaliers on the board for the first time this evening. Kins are back into Comets territory. To Hartman. Gotta get hit with the travel. <clears throat> Gotta start dribbling before you start walking. Important distinction, I think. Right. Uh, we had a sub in on the Cavaliers' side, and then Number three, uh, Wyatt Brum is subbing in for 22, Zane Scott. Looks like uh, we had Cavaliers number 32 come in, be Ethan Schumann. All right, Cavaliers working the ball around the outside of the three-point arc, getting into the paint, losing the pass. The Comets getting on top of it. Brummett getting out to Kinzer to secure possession of it. Kinzer, who is looking to pop a three. Brummett now on the outside. Going in, sending it back out to Rands. Rands, Rands sending it back over to Kinzer. Heavy defense by these Cavaliers. And we had a foul on number 13, Hunter Shanelob. Right, Cavaliers passing around the arc, popping a three off, off the, the mark. mark. Yeah, Shane Love just picked up his second foul on the block out. We have number 11, Mark Smith, subbing in for Hunter Shane Love. <laughs> Over trying to get a pass in. They get it to try to put up for two, a bit off the mark. Kinzer with it now, struggling to get out. Under double coverage, but he manages to break free. Gets it over to Smith. Smith looking for some help. Over getting really aggressive on the defense. Brummett trying to get over to Hartman, just out of arm's reach. And sloppy passes out. once again, fundamentals. Uh, those, will, those will sink you every time. And ball back in the Cavaliers court. Oh, we're trying to get a pass. There was a swat in there, got over to Kinzer. Yeah, the uh, Cavalier shooter there was just too deep into the baseline. Oh. Kinzer was looking for Smith, Smith wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, we, we uh, we did have a pass like that last night off of a rebound, mm -hmm. and uh, it happens. Fortunately, we do not have eyes in the back of our heads. Nope, nope, haven't been gifted with that. All right, back in the Cavaliers court. Popping an open three. Drain it. On the money, tying up the game at five. Kinzer getting across the mid. Going all the way to pop a two. Off the mark, and Culver securing the rebound. Culver. Off the mark, gets their own rebound. Back up. Rands is able to get a hand in on that rebound. Kinzer with the ball going across mid. 
in this heavy man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, we've struggled against this all season long, so hopefully, hopefully our Comets can figure out what to do with this as uh, Brum is struggling to find something to do with the basketball. Over to Smith, who gets it to uh, Kinzer, not Hartman. <laughs> well, Durans it back to Kinzer, pop a deep three. And it's good. Drains that like it's nothing. Puts us at eight to five with 45 seconds left in the quarter. Culver answering with a three, it's off the mark, hits the top of the backboard, out of bounds. Bummett crossing the mid with the ball. Trying to get over to Hartman. There was a defender right there to take it. Culver going with a little bit of a drive to pop up for two. It was good. That was a solid jumper right there. Kinzer driving it behind the back. Into heavy defense. Trying to look for his move as the first quarter winds down to a close. Ten seconds left. Kinzer with the drive. Loses control of the ball. Over. Rand's trying to keep up with him. He's open to make the shot. It's no Off good. Hartman. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. A lot of, a lot of back and forth action there. This certainly hasn't been boring basketball. But uh, as we go to the break between the quarters. We're going to uh, take a quick break ourselves for a word from our advertisers. Thank you for joining us tonight on RTC TV4. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Shepherd Chevrolet Buick in Rochester treats you like family. Shepherd's offers a wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles to fit your budget. Stop out for your test drive today online at shepherdsrochester.com. Woodlawn Hospital, offering state-of-the-art care for Fulton County for over 100 years. Woodlawn Hospital is the area's health care leader. Comprehensive care from head to toe. Online at woodlawnhospital.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. And we're back. If you're just joining us, you've missed an exciting first quarter of the game. Uh, Comets lead by one. And there was uh, quite a few turnovers, but certainly no lack of excitement. So coach, how are you thinking the uh, boys are looking out here tonight so far after seeing the first quarter? Well, Coach Davis told me earlier today that he was he was very surprised that Culver hasn't won a game yet. Uh, so, you know, he, he thought they were a lot better than their record. And looking at the score, having a one-point lead here after a quarter, you got to think the Comets are playing well, and, and then you have Shane Lobb on the bench, and they're still, they're still maintaining the lead. Yeah, Shane Lobb's absolutely been vital to rebounds this season, so... See what they can do. Second quarter going, Culver on Culver. their side of the court. Driving in, sending out number 10 who fakes the jumper. Those were two, Rand's getting a hand on the rebound. Kinzer now. They bring it across mid. About loses it, gets the ball back. Looking for help. Gets it over to Brummett who's out for the open layup. And it's good for two. A nice move. That's something I think they could do a lot of is the back door if, if Culver's going to continue to play so aggressive. Yeah, we, we struggle against that aggressive man-to-man -man defense, so, and doubly so if they break out a four-court press. Enzer looking for a drive in, gets it out to Rands. Sends it back out to get. Ooh, bad pass. Tries to get it out to Kinzer. Fortunately, Culver's R.T. Roberts lost control of that rolled it out of bounds off his own foot. That is why you grab a loose ball. <laughs> you're either going to outrun your dribble or you're going to kick it. Yeah. 
Seems getting set up. Go over to check it back in. The ball 15. in play. Almost didn't complete that pass. Shooter draws the foul. He's going to go to the line for two. Foul was on. Number three, Wyatt Brummett. You don't have an aggressive game, though, without, without it being a physical game. And that first shot was good. Second shot's up. Yeah, that's off the mark. How do the Cavaliers get the rebound? Trying to get it in to the number 32. If he redeem himself, he's going to get hit with the travel. He'll send it back Comet way. Cavaliers setting up for the full court press, though. And number 40, Carter Stevens, subbing in for number 15, Lance Keller, on the Cavaliers' side. Ball in play. Wyatt Brummett trying to get around the defense. Sends it over to Smith. Lobs it over to Kinzer. Looking to try and get an open three going there. The defenders were right on top of it. Kinzer getting it in to Hartman. Popping up for a two. He on gets the mark. The two. R.T. Roberts bringing it into Cavaliers country. And passed around, looking for an opening into the paint. Can't do anything with it there. Back out to the three. 11 to 32, keeping it on the top of the arc. Over 10, kind of slowing things down to get a little bit, kind of re-strategize. Drive in, no good. Out to an open shooter on the three-point line and drains it. I have Rummett now taking it across <coughs> mid again, sending it over to Hartman. I'm looking for someone opening. Gets it over to Brummett again. Culver looking to not make the mistake that Kasten did just now with leaving somebody open on the three-point line. Rams. Making a good show of it. Mark Smith drawing the foul there towards the baseline. Foul was on Cavaliers number 32, Ethan Schumann. That's his first and the team's fourth as Kinzer takes it back out. And of, Smith put up for two. And it's good. It for two. Nice. It went around the compass on the rim, but as long as it found the bottom on its way down. Back into Cavaliers territory. Over. Over 23, an driving the baseline, puts it up, and it's no good. He gets on his own rebound. Gonna guess that was an over the back on Brady Hartman. No, that was on that foul was on number eleven, Mark Smith. And we have a substitution. Zane Scott going in for Mike Rands. Over, a little bit finicky with the pass. Scott was able to get a hand on that one, keeping around the arc, looking to drive in. Was up for two. Off the off. mark, and Kinzer gets that rebound. <laughs> Kinzer driving clear to the paint, fakes a jumper out to Brummett, drives in. in, passes back out to Hartman. Hartman giving it back to Brummett. <laughs> and that'll be a Comets timeout. So while they strategize, we're going to take a break for a word from our sponsors. Thanks for watching tonight on RTC TV4. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff at Peterson Wagoner and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com.
Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. And welcome back. Teams are taking the hardwood. Comet still holding on to a three point lead. Ball back in play, Brandon Kinzer. And back to Brummett. And again, open and give it to Hartman. Then back to Brummett. And Brummett, give it back to Kinzer to pop a three. Oh, in oh, and out. Robbed. Culver now heading back to go up for a two. Just off. Kinzer getting on the rebound, keeping a hold of it. Get over to Zane Scott across the mid. Scott looking for help. Gives it over to Kinzer, who was open to put it up for two. Not quite enough power to get that over the rim. Hartman was on the rebound, but loses it. Culver. Mark Smith getting a hold of it. And we've got a foul called. Culver fans not happy about that. That foul was on uh, number 32, Ethan, Ethan Schumann. Hits hit, that's his second. Sure, the Culver fans were looking for a jump ball there, but to no prevail. Scott in the back over to Kinzer. Foul on. Yeah, it's another illegal screen on Smith. Culver bringing back into their side of the court. That foul on Smith, of course, bringing the casting foul count up to six. They're uh, looking at putting Culver into bonus territory. Over Culver. top of the arc, open three. Travel called. And the shot was no good to boot. At number 33, Mike Ranch checking in. For num number 33, Mike Ranch checking in for number three, Wyatt Brummett. Number 13, Hunter Shane Lab checking in for Mark Smith. are now with the ball. So bring it across the mid. Get over to Rands. And Rands getting it into Shane Loud, put it up for two. Gets it for two. Six foot five, hard to block that. Put the big guy back at the post. That's where we're used to seeing him so far this season. Right. R.T. Stevens looking to pass it off. Gets to number three, Owen Valaquet. Back to Stevens. Up to Carter Stevens. Looking Holder. for somebody. Across to the top of the arc, in towards the paint at the post, back out to the three point line, and driving a short jumper for two. Genzer take the ball back over mid again. It's over to Scott. Scott looking to drive in a bit, put it up for two. It's oh. swatted. Just stuffed. Over now bringing to their side of the court. Popping up for a jumper. That's good. That was just inside. That was a long two. Brings us to a one-point game with two minutes left in the half. Kinzer. And across the mid. For someone open, gives it over to Scott. Scott now looking for someone open, sends it in to Shane Lobb. Shane Lobb will pass back over to Rands. Rands looking for help. It's over to Kinzer. Kinzer trying to get something moving, drives base, pops it up for two. Oh, and just off the mark, out of bounds, off of number 10, RT Roberts. Comets retain possession. Kinzer checking it into Scott, connecting Ooh. a bit with it, had to send it out. Brady Hartman diving for that 
fouls the Culver uh, ball handler with his head. Whatever works to stop the play, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't feel like getting kicked in the head is my first choice. Well, you yeah, win some, you lose some. Eh? Yeah, it's the mullet, though. It, it, it pads it. Right. He'll be fine. Shots up. Off the mark. Out of bounds off Hunter Shane Lobb. <coughs> Number 11, Mark Smith subbing in for Shane Lobb. Kohler, open three. Off the mark and Rams with the rebound. Kinzer now with it. They do a little one-on-one -on -one action, get across the mid. Sends it over to Scott. Scott getting it back over to Kinzer. Back over to Scott, trying to get something moving. And Smith putting it back in, giving it to Rands. That was a foul there on Culver's number 15, Lance Keller. Number three, Wyatt Brummett checking in for Zane Scott, number 22, and number 13, Hunter Shane Love coming in for number 11, Mark Smith. Got to say, this uh, Culver crowd that's over near us is very vocal about how they feel the uh, refs are doing this evening. And for we know, being vocal doesn't really get you anywhere, unfortunately. No, it can get you asked to leave, but that's another story. Right. All right. Shane Laub up to Brummett. Brummett bouncing the ball off his own feet and trying to save that. He gets tra uh, travel called on him. We got number 11, Mark Smith, coming back in to play for Hunter Shane Laub. Culver, with about 45 seconds left here before halftime, trying to make something moving. Yeah. Yeah. On the outside. Single field goal is all they'd need to take the lead for the first time in this game. Play clock winding down, 24 seconds left. At the top, really slowing down the clock, keeping their own pace. They pay attention to the clock. I'm guessing their strategy is to uh, just have enough time to score. Couldn't get the two. They got three seconds, lobbing it up, way over. Way over, and that's the end of the half, ladies and gentlemen. Close ball game here going into the halftime. Comets lead by one, 16 to 15. And with that, we're going to take a break. We're going to hear some messages from our sponsors. And we'll be back here in just a few minutes to pick up the action in the second half. Thanks for joining us tonight on RTC TV4. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions online at evansagencyrochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at firstfederalbanking.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Had a short break at the halftime there. Teams in the locker rooms talking strategy, I'm sure. At this point, anyone's game with a one point difference between the Comets and the Cavs. Comets only leading by one, 16 to 15. So yeah, this uh, second half plays out. Relatively low scoring half, but it did not want for action. And ball is in play. As Brandon Kinzer passes to Brady Hartman, start off the second half. Kinzer went over to Rands. Rands sent it over to Hartman. Hartman over to Scott, over to Kinzer. I was trying to get moving with it early on. Rands popping a three. 
just off the over. mark. Hartman getting a hold of the rebound, sent it back up to Rands. Rands over to Scott. Scott sent it over to Kinzer. Pop a three from the side, just a bit off the mark. And Culver will get on that rebound. They need to move the ball and get the ball inside to Shane Lobb. He needs to go block to block. There's no one within six inches of him. Yeah. That'd be the way to do it. Miss a few threes, don't take any more chances. Send it inside, keep it safe. Culver popping up a jumper. Just outside the paint, and they take their first lead in the ballgame. They went back to man to man. Now you got Schumann on Shane Lobb. He can't stay with him. Kinzer getting it over to Rands. Getting it back out to Hartman. Hartman looking for some help. He's over to Kinzer to pop a three. Off the mark. And it had enough power to carry out past Shane Lobb's monstrous arms. Over. Cavs answer with a, a three attempt that's also off the mark. The one thing the Comets can't do is let that this first deficit of the game get in their heads. But unfortunately, it looks like they might be allowing that to happen. Got number three, Wyatt Bromit coming in for Zane Scott. There's not a lot of ball movement right now. I think we've seen more shot attempts from various players so far in these last two and a half or two minutes or so than I have the rest of the season. I think you're right on that one. All right, a drive over here on Cavaliers' side, and that's another two. Cavs stretching out their lead a little bit. And the Comets again struggling with those fundamentals. Over losing the ball, going back to Rands. Rands. Drawing a, excuse me, a foul off of number three, Owen Valaquet. That's his first, team first this half. Brummett trying to get into Rands, bounced off two defenders and ended up in his arms. Rands sent it to Shane Love to pop a three. It's good from the corner. Ooh. That low percentage shot there ties up the ball game. I'm thinking that's a shot they will continue to give him. Shane Lobb, that is. Yeah, he's he, he's showing tonight that he's dangerous from about anywhere on the floor. We had a shooting foul there on uh, number 23. It's uh, Brandon Kinzer. His first for the game. Shot was good by number 10 for the Cavs. Second shot follows suit. Shane Lobb looking to check it in, get it to someone. Rands will take it. Full court press. Rands getting it back to Shane Lobb. Got a foul there on number 10, R.T. Roberts. Problem with that press breaker, you two guards are on the other end of the floor and you got your center. <laughs> trying to handle the ball. <laughs> bringing the ball up to four. Well, you know, in Sunday pickup ball, anybody can can be a guard, but um, she's looking ugly early in this half. Without the comments, is going to call a timeout and hopefully re-strategize here. We're going to take a short break and get a word from our sponsors. Thank you. You're watching RTC. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Blue Dragon Taekwondo. Whether you want to learn self-defense, physical cross-training, or looking to compete in national tournaments, Blue Dragon Taekwondo is the area's leading martial arts authority. Online at tkdbluedragon.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Right. 
All right, as the teams get back out on the floor, we're back tonight. Cavaliers have come out of the locker room from the half on fire. Let's see if the Comets can do something to cool that off. Shane, Shane Lobb looking to send it in. To Rands, Rands is going to take it over mid. Needs some help, sends it over to Shane Lobb. Shane Lobb looking for someone open, gives it back over to Rands. Rands sent over to Kinzer to pop a three. He's going to get hit with the travel. I don't know, I hate to say it, but we're getting lucky with some sloppy passes here, and that's just it's reinforcing bad habits. Ball back in Culver's court. Culver Stevens has it. Drive. That's all they're doing right now. They're going right at Brummett. With R.T. Robertson, there's not a lot of help side. Yeah. Hunter Shanelaub taking a foul, or giving the foul on that as Robert or Stevens drives in. Those shots good. And uh, at 100% so far tonight, it's looking like Stevens is a dangerous person to put on that line. Toes the line for that second shot. It's up. Off the mark. You get on the rebound to put it up for two. Basically comes a three-point play there. Mark Smith trying to get the pass to Brummett. He'll end up taking it out. Giving it back over to the Cavs. Over. Send it up for a two. He was way open for that. Left a man open in the paint. Yeah, they Can't didn't do communicate that. down low. That's switching defense. If you don't communicate, that's going to happen. Rands, double coverage, trying to send it over to Smith. Wild pass. They have full time, full time out called by Coach Carl Davis. Sure getting quite frustrated down here on the side. Well, while they have another strategy session, we're going to hear another word from our sponsors. Thanks for watching tonight on RTC. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Shepherd Chevrolet Buick in Rochester treats you like family. Shepherd's offers a wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles to fit your budget. Stop out for your test drive today online at shepherdsrochester.com. Woodlawn Hospital, offering state-of-the-art care for Fulton County for over 100 years. Woodlawn Hospital is the area's health care leader. Comprehensive care from head to toe. Online at woodlawnhospital.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Another game. Wow, and just coming back, the... Uh, Cavaliers came right off of the right out of the timeout. And drew a foul. That was on uh, number 20, Brady Hartman, sending 32 Ethan Schumann to the line. That's good for Schumann. We got number 13 under Shane Lobb checking in for Brady Hartman. Got a little different press breaker here now. Got Kinzer and Brummett up. Now that seems like a better idea. Into Kinzer. With a quick spin, bring it over the mid. Gonna drive in a bit. Gets it over to Rands. Rands down to the baseline. He needs help, sends it over to Smith. Smith to Brummett. Well, they gotta make that extra pass there. Kinzer's at the top open. Rands oh, losing all the Rands loses it to 23, Kia Reale, who takes it in for the score. Comets not need to not start trying to push things so fast they lose their heads. Yeah, 
got yeah. a foul down here. They got Schumann. He came around the top. Foul was on 32, Schumann. Tell who came out ready to play the second half so far. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, think the Comets may be hoping to rest on their laurels a little bit. And uh, these Cavaliers hungry for a victory this season, and they're showing it this half. Smith hit with a travel. Dribbled into that double coverage. And we have uh, number 11, Donovan Ziaja, <laughs> subbing in on the Cavaliers' side. Comments are going to have to slow it down and play some smart basketball when they get a hold of it. Uh, hey, Rands with a steal. Going over to Kinzer. Kinzer into triple coverage. Back across to Rands. Going over to Brummett. Brummett back to Rands. Mm -hmm. Way outside. So we had a foul there on 23, Kia Reale. Kia, Kaya, I don't know. I am probably butchering this name. I, I apologize. Rand's getting it over to Kinzer. He's going to drive in to pop it up for two. It's good. Gets the two. Takes us to a 12 point ball game. This is the biggest lead of the game. Double coverage down there by the Comets. Brummett getting a hand in there, ended up going off on him. Still be Culver's ball. 22, Zane Scott checking in for Mike Rands. Now in similar situations in the past, we've seen Scott get into foul trouble really quickly in the third and fourth. So see how this, see what kind of ball he's gonna play tonight. Cavs passing the ball around, looking to get something going. Up to the top of the key. Gonna go in to put up for a two. Off the mark, draws the foul. He's gonna go to the line for two. Foul was on number 11, Mark Smith. That's his third. Two shots up, and it's on the mark. That's kind of where they've kind of taken over this game. If you go back to the start, they've just been driving and we're putting them at the free throw line. And they seem to be a pretty high percentage free throw team. And you get beat off the dribble and they don't have help side and it's a bad situation. Absolutely. Second shot's good. Green Love, and check it back in, get to Brummett. Between that and struggling against a full court press, which we have all season. Smith to travel. We've had that problem before too. Break the press and then we turn it over. Well, I, I th my observation is with having, w without having a number, a large number of people who can really handle the ball well. You end up having to break the press w with your, your forwards and, and your people who aren't usually ball handlers, and then they struggle with actually keeping control of it as they get into. And they see that basket and they think there's a lane, and their eyes get real big, and they and need to slow it down and pull it out, run the offense. Ab so, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, because once again they either outrun the dribble or they manage to take it off their own leg. All right, Brummett struggling under the defense, getting over mid. Send it over to Kinzer. Kinzer trying to get something moving. Ooh, he loses control of it. We've got a foul. Might have banged his knee a little bit there. He's up and going though. Uh, foul was on Wyatt Brummett. It's his second. Over, looking for going straight for the drive to go up for two. 
He's going to draw the foul there off of number 13, Hunter Shanelaub. He'll go to the line for an and one. Number 11, Mark Smith checking in for Hunter Shanelaub after that. So after that, Shane Love is sitting at four fouls. He's in foul trouble. Shots up. It's off the mark. Mark Smith with the rebound. Over to Brandon Kinzer. He's going to bring it into Comets territory. Kinzer loses control of it. Giving the Cavaliers an easy lay-in. Stretch that lead to 18. Kinzer sending the ball over to Smith and over to Brummett. Officials being really generous there, not calling that hop a travel. Kinzer now popping a deep two. Off the mark, but he did draw the foul there. He'll be going to the line. Foul was on number 15, Lance Keller. Shots in. And we have uh, number 40, Zach Conrad, subbing in for Brady Hartman. Puts up the second shot. It's off the mark, and Culver with the rebound. 27 seconds left in this third quarter that has been all Culver. Over slowing things down, looking to make one last play for the third. Screen down there, I didn't hear any conversation on the floor. Popping a three. On the money at the buzzer. Well, a heartbreaking third quarter for the cast and comments. We'll be back in a moment to see if they can turn up the heat here in the fourth. Thank you for watching tonight on RTC. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff at Peterson Wagoner and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, waiting for the teams to take the floor. I'm sure Coach Davis is uh, having a few words down there on the sideline. Well, we've got to watch the fouls and uh, get that ball moving and keep a hold of it while we're moving it. Yeah, that's been definitely a big problem so far, especially in the third. <laughs> Except for those situations where they literally held the ball when they were moving, and, and you're not allowed to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, they need to play this in four minute segments. They got to try to get this within 10 with four minutes to go. Culver looking for an opening, sends it to the top. Now, coach, if that was you on the sideline there on that period break, well, what would you have been saying down there? <laughs> okay, make sure it's FCC approved. <laughs> right. I mean, we just got to pick up the defense now, you know, and, and try to get to the free throw line because ultimately that's what Culver did to get the lead. They got to the free throw line, and, and when you're down this big, you got to play it in segments, and, and you got to get to the line and, and score with uh, no time coming off the clock. And speaking of on the line, R.T. Stevens back on the line, tacking another one onto that Culver lead. Oh, 
Second shot off the mark. <coughs> Foul there on number 40, Carter Stevens. That's his second. And they're one away from putting the Comets into bonus territory. Now they just need to go. We got by the travel there. Linzer trying to get over to Smith. Ooh. Looks like it hit a bit hard on the stairs over there. It seems to be all right. That, that's those passing fundamentals. And yeah, he picked his dribble up too early, and then there's nowhere to pass, and he has to try to force something. He got by with a little shuffle there. Ooh. There's a bad pass. Casting getting a hold of it. Hartman giving it over to Kinzer. He across the mid. He drive in a bit, send it back out to Scott. Scott having a little trouble. Gets it over to Kinzer to pop a three. He gets Nails three. that open three. Cavs answer you with the lane. You can't trade baskets when you're down this big. No. Again, got beat off the dribble and there wasn't any help side. Thomas not getting an inbounds quite fast enough. Substitutions on the Cavaliers side. We have number three coming in for number 10, number 15 in for number 11. As the Cavs take the ball out there from a, a really a, a pointless turnover. Right. Well, they're just going to hold the ball. You got to get out and get on them. I mean, as terrible as it is to watch, it's a super valid strategy for the Cavaliers right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I'm them, I'm holding the ball. We may hold the ball with a four point lead sometimes. All yeah. right. You know. If they're not going to pressure us, you'll have the fans hollering, but who cares? Right. I've said it all season long when, whenever it's happened, and we've not watched a lot of stall ball this season no. on the games that we've covered, but uh, it's terrible to watch. But it's such a valid strategy. Yep, until that shot clock goes in, that's going to be a strategy used. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I imagine we could talk about that until we're blue in the face, though. So. <laughs> I remember back when I was in high school, I'd sit there and, and watch, I watched teams. I, I think they held it for a full half of the game time. That's what Bobby did down at IU. Got a lead and went four corners. I remember an NCAA game before the shot clock where Princeton won a game 23 to 19 at the college level. <laughs> All right, so foul on number 13, Hunter Shane Laub. Foul was against 32, Ethan Schumann. That's his fourth. He's in foul trouble. And Shane Laub on the line for one and one. Shots off the mark, and Culver with the rebound. It's just, unfortunately, it looks like a different cast and team than what was out in the first half. Or you could say a different Culver team. Uh, that's yeah. absolutely <laughs> accurate, too. They, they seem to be and, and more aggressive than they were in the first half. Culver going up and easy, too. non help side defense. Lost their kid on the switch. Just, yeah. Gins are now. Looking, Looking for, for help. help, yeah. Gets it over to Shane Laub. Send it over to Rands. I have to say, though, I have compression gear that doesn't cling as tight as Culver's defense is right now. <laughs> I've been getting it back to Kenzer. Going to drive in a pop up for a two. And it goes in. We'll call that the lucky bounce, and then we'll take it. Culver still with a 20 point lead though. Comet's defense needs to wake up here and get that ball back. 
Yeah, you got to be denying everywhere now, and, and we're giving them passing lanes. Pretty good on ball pressure, but. Between that and I'm, I'm seeing open men all over. Yeah. I mean, they just took 35 seconds off the clock and scored. And uh, we're winding down towards the end of that first four minute block you said they need to take advantage of and they just have not. Rand's getting the double coverage, getting the ball knocked out of his hands. Culver, easy, easy layup. layup. Comet struggling again against this full court press. Comet trying to get over to Shane Lobb. Culver will take it back. He's wide open. He's got all the time in the world. Another layup. Can make those all day. But we only got three and a half minutes. And Kinzer getting called for carry there at the half court line. <laughs> And unsurprisingly, Coach Carl Davis calling a full timeout. And with that, we'll be back after a few words from our sponsors here on RTC. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at EvansAgencyRochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at firstfederalbanking.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Players back on the floor after that timeout. Go over with the ball on their side of the court. Just taking their time. And don't blame them. I'll build out to the outside. <clears throat> Kasten just cannot leave men open and has to put a lot of pressure on that ball right now. Over. Has to. And that's exactly what I was talking about not doing. Ziaja with the basket. I just wanted to say that name once. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel better that I wasn't as far off the mark as I might have been. Well, I waited until I heard the announcer say it. <laughs> Smart <laughs> move. Repeated what he said. <laughs> so if, we, if I said it wrong, it is the announcer's fault. <laughs> Mr. Butchkowski. <laughs> I think that's Mr. King down there announcing. Oh, I saw Butchkowski down there. I guess it is Mr. King. Mr. King's been announcing a lot of years. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I feel some confidence in his skills down there. All right, cast and sending number 15, Lance Keller to the line. That foul was on Hunter Shane Lobb. That'll be the last he's allowed for the evening. Culver getting on the rebounds. Kept trying to put it up, but then he called for travel. travel. But with 2.33 left on the clock, I don't think we that the Comets will be able to overcome a nearly 30-point deficit. Scott going over to Kenzer to pop a three. He's off. Out of bounds. <coughs> Out of bounds off the Cavaliers defender. This close side inbound though, it might be ugly with, uh, oh no. Pressure let up, ball came into Mark Smith, no problem. Over to Zane Scott. And McKenzie to pop another three. And it is not off the mark. But we've got to get a steal and get back down there. It's just. And leaving men open out on the three point line. I mean, it's. It's 
Send it from base to the paint to put up two. Off the mark. Rands with the rebound. Over to Kenzer. Heavy coverage there on Brandon Kenzer. Kenzer going to lob it over to Scott to pop up for a three. Off the mark. Way off the mark. You got to know where you're at when you're getting ready to shoot. He had to look down at his feet because he wanted to make sure it was a three, and that just took all of his yeah. out of out of that. Had no fluid motion there. We're gonna have a full sub in over here on the on casting bench. It's like we have uh, Jesse Rockwolf, Micah Colvin, Brady Mills. Luke Lau and Zach Conrad in. Wait, Levi Lau. Oh, Lord. Don't let him know about that. I'll never hear the end of that. It's all right. I screwed up. Yeah, I called him. Last year, calling it. I called him in class the whole first semester, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called my dad more times than I can remember. Culver, just looking to wear the timeout. Don't Absolutely. Sub 60 seconds here in this game. They're commanding a 25 point lead. They put up for two. And it's good. From nearly behind the backboard. Zach Conrad looking for somebody to send it into. Gets it into Micah Colvin. Colvin getting it to Rockwolf. Over to Conrad. Conrad, the actual tallest member of the cast and roster. Didn't see a lot of playtime, and Lau losing it. 13.2 left on the clock. I honestly don't know that I do anything except put it right next to my hip. Yep. That'll do it. Just like that. That's the ball game. Heartbreaker tonight for the Comets as they fall to the Culver Cavaliers, 57 to 30. Well, we want to thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, join us again next Saturday as we watch a boys and girls doubleheader here at home. And. Uh, We'll actually get to see Coach Helmick in action. Yeah. We appreciate you joining us tonight, Don. Hey, anytime. I had a good time. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We're going to have a few more words from our sponsors. And uh, we'll see you next time here on RTC. Yeah.